policy. Y'all, before we begin today's video, make sure you like, comment, and subscribe. Turn on post notifications so you're notified whenever I post a new video. Does it look like I'm not wearing... Oh my goodness, let me keep my hair like this because I'm wearing a tube dress. Not that y'all asked or anything. I'm wearing a tube dress and I had a cardigan um, earlier. I just came back from church. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. I had a cardigan over it. So I'm going to say have a blanket. Look, problem solved because I don't need it to look like I'm half naked. Oh, all glory to God, y'all. I got to interview a presidential candidate and more interviews coming soon. So go ahead and comment down below who you want me to speak to. Love the support um make sure you check that video out i'll make sure to link it right here or something um but yeah long story short follow also follow me on my social media so you're notified and updated because i post my updates there so today we are going to watch i'm gonna keep it a book i watched this already from beginning to end and it's not gonna be like a real raw reaction this is pretty much just me already watching it and letting y'all know my thoughts during the interview, we're not going to watch the whole thing, but we're going to pretty much watch Larry Elder. He really, like, I don't know if annihilated is a boost of a word, but he came in there with, he did not play no games. Like, literally, he was on The Breakfast Club, and when I say I was perplexed i was oh my goodness because i knew larry elder was a very very intelligent man i didn't pay too much attention to him because i'm not gonna vote for him anyway but um i have to give him his credit he ran circles around specifically charlemagne um but i'm gonna let y'all know my thoughts as i watch through it but we're just gonna go ahead and begin we're gonna watch probably like 10 15 minutes of it where it, where it gets juicy the last 30 minutes or so i don't know skip through whatever whatever the vibes are telling us that's what we're gonna do so if you came here trying to watch the whole thing i don't know if this video is for you but you're gonna get my reaction let's go ahead and begin education whether it is all those things you do understand that and agree with I, that I, right? I do but much of it is either self-inflicted or because of policies that we have supported Democrats that we have supported. I wrote a book called, it's coming out in, uh, in October, it's called As Goes California, My Mission to Rescue the Golden State and Save the Nation. It's about the one party rule in California. California has super majorities of Democrats in the Senate and in the House. And as a result, our schools are working are near the bottom. People are leaving California for the very first time. We have the highest uh, state income tax in the country. The average price of a home in California costs 175% above the national average, all because of these left-wing policies that are hurting the very people, black and brown people living in the inner city, that people on the left claim that they care about. Do you think slavery was self-inflicted? Or do you think Jim Crow segregation was self-inflicted? Or do you think, you know... Slavery was self inflicted. Of course, it wasn't self inflicted, but but uh, no, but, but, but there are a lot of there, a lot of people have bloody hands in slavery. Mm -hmm. For example, slavery could not have existed had it not been for African chieftains who were selling black slaves captured uh, in battle or captured through raids and selling them to European and Arab slavers. It could not have could not have existed without that. So everybody has dirty hands here. That's why reparations is such a foolish thing. If you're going to get mm -hmm. reparations from the five percent or so of white people that have some sort of generational connection to slavery, and that's all there is, then you need to go back to Africa uh, and get money from African countries uh, that were involved in the slave trade and the and in the Arab slave trade. And by the way, the Arab slave trade was even worse than the European slave trade. Ninety percent rate of attrition often making men and women walk on barefoot across the Sahara, and the men were castrated, uh, only about okay, five- so, 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 so if they go after the money from the other countries, then would you agree that it would be okay to go after the money from America? Is that when, your when problem it, when, with when, it? When, when are you gonna stop with this? Everybody has so a I grievance. I just asked a simple I'm just, question. I'm, I'm, I'm answering, I'm <sighs> Something with Larry Elder, he's so blunt. He said, when are y'all gonna stop with this? <laughs> Answering your question, oh, wow. there, no, there, there's no end. There, there, be, there will be no end to this because slavery has okay, been part of human history it's a, it's from the very beginning. Question. Okay, we be now, getting money. I've let you talk, sir. I've let you talk, and every time I talk, you begin to talk, and then you say, "Let you finish." So I asked you a very simple question. You said, "If you're going to go after it in America, go after it in Africa." So if we all agree to go after it in Africa. Will you then agree to go after it in America? Is this a simple question? No, yes no, or no, no. I won't because it's a waste of time. We ought to be spending our okay, time no on. Problem. Okay, y'all. There was a lot of tension in this interview. I'm not, I'm going to keep it a book. There was a lot of tension in this interview. Um, Larry Elder is very intelligent. Larry Elder, um, I will say this. People were saying his responses, his responses were very blunt. And I'm not, yeah, his, very, his responses were very blunt and very straightforward. 
and they did come off some of them came off as condescending but you have to look at the questions that he was being asked and how they were being asked especially with Charlemagne. like some of the stuff that he was being asked it was like almost uh um disrespecting his intelligence like why would you even ask that type of vibe so i before we even get even deeper larry elder really held his own in this interview am i going to vote for him no but that's besides the point like he held his own on education Next question. okay you okay okay you yeah. told me that that i cut you off then i tried to answer your question you won't let me finish go ahead, go ahead, go ahead, go. thank you it's a waste of time. We ought to be talking about working hard, investing in ourselves. Right now, as we speak, so there are Haitians uh, in Haiti lining up for a lottery to come into this country. Why? Because it is the land of the free and the home of the brave. You can go from nothing to something faster in America uh, than any other country in all of human history. We ought to be talking about that. Let me just one more point. 1997, Time Magazine and CNN hooked up together to do a poll on what black teenagers and white teenagers felt about racism. Mm -hmm. And both of them were asked, is racism a major problem in America? Both of them said yes. But then Time and CNN asked this question of the, of the black teenagers. Is racism a big problem, a small problem, or no problem in your own daily life? This is 1997. 89% of them said small problem or no problem in my own daily life. In fact, twice as many blacks said failure to take advantage of available opportunities is a bigger problem than racism. That was 1997. Twice, 1997, look it up. It's 2023 though. You think America's more racist now after the election and re-election of Barack Obama than it was in 1997? Yes, because of the election of uh, MAGA, Donald Trump. I'm going to tell you this. The disconnect when it comes to this conversation with racism, and I've said it before and I'll say it again, there is this disconnect that we're never going to get, like, we're just talking in circles. We have, I'm not even going to say one side. I'm just going to say, because I don't even think it's a side thing. I think it's just, like, someone's mentality. Some people think... We need to, we acknowledge it, we move past it, and we keep moving forward, which is true. But other people think, before I move forward, it needs to be acknowledged that this happened, and we need to acknowledge that it's an ongoing issue, which, which can also be true, which is also true. So it's just like, we're just talking in circles and over and over again, because both, both sides and both mentalities are missing each other's point. Let me play it. 100%. Yes. Really? Oh, absolutely. Well, how is it, how is it uh, Charlemagne, that Donald Trump got 8% of the black vote in, uh, in 2016? He got 12% in 2020, a 50% increase. He got 20% of the black male vote in 2020. Uh, if MAGA is racist, how do you explain that, that Donald Trump substantially increased the percentage of black vote the Republican Party got? Sometimes people make points. So why are you running against Trump then, Mr. Elder? Yeah, I'm, not, I'm not running against him. I'm running against Biden-Harris. Any one of the Republican nominees we have would be better than what we have right now. I'm not running against him. I'm running to put forth the issues I just now mentioned that I've been talking about for the last few minutes. You know, I want to ask you about that. You know, after four indictments, 91 criminal charges, don't you think it would behoove the Republican Party to move on from Donald Trump? I think that the voters in the primary will make that decision. What do you think? Mm. I have no problem with, with uh, I thought Donald Trump did an extraordinary job uh, as president, especially for black people. Best economy ever. He did something about the borders. The people that are most hurt because of porous borders are black people living in the inner city because most of the illegal aliens have little or no education. They end up living in the inner city. They compete against. I'm gonna say this, y'all. If it's Biden and if it's Trump um, rematch, I, you heard it here first. What people are going to do, they're going to compare their life how it was during Trump's presidency. And they're going to compare their life how it was during Biden's presidency. A lot of times, and you see it a lot with Democrats, they'll throw these talking points. Oh, he's racist. Oh, he's this. Oh, he's that. Now with a lot of things happening and people struggling, literally struggling, those talking points don't work no more. Sorry, not sorry. As a, as a Democrat, I'm letting y'all know, sorry, not sorry. So if Democrat, if the Democrats want to keep that seat in 2024, their best bet is putting Robert F. Kennedy Jr. Robert F. Kennedy Jr., I kid you not. But Robert F. Kennedy, because I truly believe Robert F. Kennedy can be anybody that's lined up except for Biden. Because people are not going to be willing, people aren't willing to vote for Robert F. Kennedy Jr. because they have too much loyalty to Biden. So, yeah, with that being said, 2024 is going to be very, very humbling for the Democratic Party because they want to push Biden down our throats. But we as people, we're not receptive to that. So therefore, because of that, um, people are going to, going to vote for Cornell West 
which in their words would split the vote, whatever that means, and Trump is going to win presidency. You heard her here first. Uh, black people with high school or less for jobs. Mm -hmm. There are about a million fewer black people working than, than who, who would otherwise be working if it weren't for illegal alien labor. And illegal alien labor, according to a study done by the Civil Rights Commission, puts downward pressure to the tune of almost $2,000 per year in the salaries of black people living in the inner city. And Donald Trump uh, gave us the most secure border we ever had. He also mm -hmm. supported school choice. He also did the, the First Step Act, which allowed about 5,000 uh, mostly black men with long criminal uh, sentences, nonviolent, to have their sentences reduced an average of 70 months per. Uh, he mm -hmm. pardoned Jack Johnson, the first black heavyweight champion. Even Barack Obama didn't do that. Yeah, he think, did an I extraordinary think, job for black people. I think you're innocent until proven guilty, but I feel like <clears throat> President Biden had four indictments, 91 criminal charges. Uh, you know, President Obama had four indictments, 91 criminal charges. Y'all would be telling them that they need to step aside and they shouldn't be running for president. Well, I but people... Uh, this is the problem that I have is like hypocrisy like the same energy that you're and mind you in Charlemagne's defense in this he's he's been very very critical of Biden in some some cases I feel like he should be more critical in Biden but Charlemagne is very critical in Biden but this concept that oh the Democratic Party is the best of two evils what where like, I'm just trying to be honest here. Where, how, why, what are you seeing? Because, mm, like, literally, I just don't get it. I don't get it. I think people's biggest problem is pitting their identity and their party affiliation. Because when you do that, you lose a sense of reality. It's like you have to defend certain things because that's what your party goes for. Me? My identity is in Christ. Jesus Christ, my Lord and Savior. So whatever comes my way, whatever is wrong, I'm going to say it's wrong. Whatever it's right, I'm going to say it's right. And that's not point blank, period. So this whole concept of me bending over backwards to defend Joe Biden or the Democratic Party when they've been doing the American people wrong, what do I look like? I'm not going to do that. Sorry, not sorry. I wouldn't vote for Barack Obama or for Joe Biden in any case, no matter whether he had indictments or no indictments. I don't vote for tax and <laughs> regulate liberals. Um, you're a conservative, right? Obviously. No question. What, imi what initially made you gravitate towards being a conservative? I think it was my father. My father was a lifelong Republican, and my father always told my brothers and me the following. Democrats want to give you something for nothing. When you try and get mm. something for nothing, you almost always end up getting nothing for something. And my dad, I told you about his background. He told my brothers and me that hard work wins. You get out of life what you put into it. You cannot control the outcome, Larry, but you are 100% in control of the effort. And before you moan or groan about what somebody did or said, do you go to the nearest mirror, look at it, and ask yourself, what could I have done to change the outcome? And finally, Charlemagne, my dad, told me, my brothers and me this. No matter how hard you work, how good you are, sooner or later, bad stuff is going to happen to you. How you deal with those bad things will tell your mother and me if we raised a man. I wrote a book about my father's life. It's called Dear Father, Dear Son, Two Lives, Eight Hours. It's about an eight-hour conversation he and I had uh, where at the beginning of the conversation, I thought my dad was harsh. He thought he spanked us too often. He, we, had a, we had a belt. In those days uh, from the South, you spank kids. Uh, and I thought my dad was way too harsh. And we had an eight-hour eight hour conversation. And by the time we ended, my dad got bigger and bigger and bigger. And Larry Elder got smaller and smaller and smaller. And I apologized to him. And it's a book that that's changed a lot of people's lives. It's called, as I said, Your Father, Dear Son, Two Lives, Eight Hours. The paperback is called A Lot Like Me. Same book, but it's cheaper. Can you honestly say this is the Republican Party that you grew up on? This modern-day GOP? Yes. Uh, the Republican Party pretty much has always stood for low tax. That's the only thing that I mainly disagree on. I think when I think of a real Republican, as of like today, real Republican, I think of like Mitt Romney. Um, I I think rest in peace, um, John McCain. That's when it. That's like real like Republican people to me or individuals to me. Um, honestly speaking, when I think of like Ron DeSantis, I don't even think of Republican. I think of radical. That like. Yeah, I think there's a difference. Um, yeah. <laughs> it's low regulation, uh, 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 peace through strength, not strength through peace, and strong borders, and still does. And, and when Donald Trump is gone, and he will be gone, mm -hmm. even if he gets reelected, if the day after he gets reelected, he's a lame duck, the party will still go on. The principles will still go on. However, I do believe that uh, many people in our party uh, have, have uh, spent and spent and spent so that Ronald Reagan, my favorite president, when he entered the Oval Office, Charlemagne, 
Uh, when he left, the government was bigger. It got bigger under George Herbert Walker Bush. It got bigger under W. It got bigger under Donald Trump. And the only way to restrain spending is with an amendment to the Constitution to fix spending to a certain percentage of the GDP, with exception for war and for natural disaster. Otherwise, we're going to get bigger and bigger and bigger. Let me use the word unsustainable. Mm-hmm. That's the word Barack Obama used to describe the so-called entitlements. Uh, unsustainable was a word that Bill Clinton used to describe them. But nothing happens because if you run claiming you're going to reform Social Security or Medicare, the other side is going to accuse you of not caring about the sick, the poor, the elderly, and you are going to lose elections. That's why government gets bigger and bigger and bigger. So we need a law to restrain spending. Otherwise, it's going to get bigger and bigger and bigger. And for young people like you, uh, these programs are not going to be there. Mm. Mr. Elder, that's how, uh, it is. that's how it is with Social Security. Like, by the time I'm ready to cash out my Social Security, if it's still there, it's not going to be there. Uh, that sentence didn't make sense, but you, you get what I'm saying. By the time my Social Security, I think I even read that as a, we're on the rate to where um, I think it's Gen Z's, younger millennials, by the time it's time for us to retire and get Social Security, we can only cash out up to 76%, something like that. So it's like, a lot of black conservatives and, and I, I I completely agree about the black family. I, I don't think anybody here objects to that. And another thing, another thing I want to say is that they need to stop um, making black conservatism so foreign. There is a lot of black conservatives. There may not be a lot of public black conservatives, but I have personally met a lot of black conservatives. Like there's more black conservatives than people try to put it out to be. It's not that foreign, especially like when you in church conservative the conservative agree about that at all. I, I think when you talk about ideology and then you mix in parties and then personalities it gets kind of confusing and you know you mention yourself not to moan and groan you know that as long as you work hard all is well and I think where the conflict is coming in is you did moan and groan about how the Republicans treated you you did moan and groan about Governor Newsom and uh, you know asking for a recall you did not leave that up to the voters you are moaning and groaning when it comes to Donald Trump and how he's being treated so it just seems to be a hypocrisy and I don't know if the message would land a little bit better if there was some fairness across the board uh, on Democrats and Republicans. I'm an independent, by the way, and I think both parties are trash. And I think all of us here, you know, see both sides. And that's the part that's just not landing for me. There seems to be an unfairness on both sides with you. Well, not too surprisingly, I don't agree with your analysis. How is it that I did not leave the recall to the voters? What do you mean by that? What do you... You said you said, you said I didn't leave the recall to the voters. No, no, no. I said you moaned and groaned about it. You, You said it should be recalled, correct? Correct. I said Gavin Newsom should have been recalled. Yes. Right. That's moaning and groaning. Well, actually, it's taking advantage of what's in the California Constitution, which is when a certain percentage of voters sign a petition to recall a politician, uh, there can be a recall vote. And there was one as there was in 2003. We recalled a governor then. And there was in 2021 when I attempted to recall Gavin Newsom. That's part of our democratic process in California. Uh, absolutely. A- absolutely. We, we agree with that. I'm going I'm gonna be honest. I don't care what no one says. A lot of people don't like uh, Tess. I like Tess. Even though I disagree with her on some things, I love her because I love when people um, just like, not budge back, but like bring in conversation, bring in substance, bring in like, I don't know, but I love her. Um, So with that being said, what she needs to work on is bringing up facts, not feelings. Um, Even though she did what she said was true, she said it in a way of where she felt like he moaned and groaned. But in reality, it wasn't him moaning and groaning. Like he said, he was just using, according to law, he had the right. He had the right to for the recall, of expressing the recall, whatever it may be. So what she and also Charlemagne, Charlemagne is really bad at it as well. Stop using feelings. You can't be using feelings when you're in these conversations with like, these presidential candidates or politicians you need to have your numbers you need to have your data you need to have your analytics you need to have your information lined up these feelings were well i feel like slavery and racism still exist and or i feel like racism still exists i feel like we're still living in the um suffering from repercussions of slavery. like why are you you need statistics because one thing that someone cannot argue no matter what you can't argue facts so when you're just saying i feel like this this and that they're like you have no credibility or no, like you have no substance when you do that. But like I said before, a lot of people don't like her. I like, well, a lot of people from the right don't like her, but I like her. Um, even though I disagree with her, I, I still like her. <laughs>
to your statement when you said rather than moan about it a little while ago you said rather than moan about it i'm just going to keep doing the hard work and so i'm just saying that technically is moaning well, about it because I, the I governor's the stuff I don't, so I don't, I, I don't, that's I don't, my I don't, point, I don't, sir. I don't it's, follow. It's, I don't follow exactly what you're saying. I really. It's don't. okay. I don't, I don't okay. expect you to. Yeah, but I, it's, I'm, it's I'm, one I'm, moment. I'm a, little, I'm a little slow one sometimes. Moment, one moment. Yeah. <sighs> Yo, like Elder, he's funny. Like these candidates, they're not. You're. They're. You try them if you want to. Type of vibe, and it's not even only him. Vivek is the same way, and so did uh, Marianne Williamson as well like Dr. Cornell West, like a lot of these presidential candidates across the board, try them if you want to. They're just going, they're, they're not going to take the high road. They're not taking the high road. They're going to talk mess back. He talked about some, I'm a little slow sometimes. Like, we get it. Yeah. One moment you're complaining about the system and the next minute you're saying the system is, is fair. The next minute you're saying it's not fair. So that's what I'm saying. There just seems to be a double standard on you and the system not wanting to be accountable for a system that do, black do people I, are not do, in charge of, by the I, way, do I, of not wanting to hold both sides accountable when it comes to the system. Do I believe Hillary was treated differently and Joe Biden treated differently than Donald Trump is being treated? Yes, I do. Is that an indictment about whether or not America is systemically racist? No, it is not. Those are two, they're, they're two, totally two different, two different things. things. Yes, you're, yes, you're trying are. to merge the two, but they're two totally different things. I agree with you. The two different things. No, no, we're we're agreeing. We're agreeing the two different things. We're agreeing. No, we're agreeing the two different things. We're not agreeing that there's not systematic racism because we're not in charge of the system, sir. In case you okay, okay, all right, all right. Can we? Can we? Black people have never been in charge of any system. We're not actually. Actually, actually, we have been. Take. She gotta let. She gotta relax, though. I'm not gonna lie. She has to relax. She gotta let him talk. She's over talking. You can't like. To there's. Put the emotion aside. Like when we have conversations, like you have to. Y'all picking up what I'm putting down. Like this emotional stuff. Gotta relax. Put it to the side, because if that's the case, there's y'all just gonna be talking over each other. Back and forth. Baltimore. No, we're, we're, no, we've never been in charge may, of. May these, I finish? Any, no, may, tell me what financial system are black people in okay, charge of? Let, what take, healthcare system are black people in charge of? What government system are black people I'm, in I'm charge about, of? I'm about ready to tell what you. Prison system are back, I'm, no, I'm, black. No, black people. I'm about ready to tell you. I'm not talking about mayors. I already know that talk, talking point, sir. I go on Fox News all the time as well. So let's not let's not go there with that. I said, what system have we created? Goodness. Have we implemented that we have been in charge of? Name one. Is this why you don't like talking to black women, Larry Oden? Wow. Um, Baltimore. <laughs> See, look. Okay, I've been watching The Breakfast Club for a long, long time. I will give The Breakfast Club this. I've seen a lot of growth in regards to how they used to. I, I'm not even gonna group them all together. How Charlemagne used to act and envy here and there at where they are now. But question, like comments like that. Slick comments like that. Is that why you don't like talking to black women, Charlemagne? Come on now. Come on now. Larry Elder, he's probably like, I am so over it. I'm so over it. Because something that I've learned, and I thank God for implementing this in me so young, especially as I'm start as I'm growing and starting to interview more people, is to put you like I can't don't don't maneuver in emotion. Don't react off of emotion. Like I understand a lot of these topics, like you hold dear to your heart, a lot of these topics, how it affects a lot of people and it's probably like it's probably personal to you but you have to s separate emotion when engaging in conversations like these because i'm telling you and i've seen it and i've been in rooms just because be maneuvering and emotion gets you nowhere it gets you nowhere you literally talk in circles back and forth i'm telling y'all uh <laughs> freddie gray a few years no, no, ago no. That's mayors. I'm not talking, I said system. I'm Remember, going to like tell you system. about this system if you allow me to finish my point. I'm not talking about somebody elected and doing a job, sir. I asked what system did we create? What financial system Okay, let's system talk about the create? system of one yeah, of the largest, him, point, thank you, then. one of the systems of yeah. one of the largest uh, uh, cities in America, Baltimore. Uh, Freddie Gray died in police custody a few years ago. Uh, the Sorry, mayor Ronnie, fix my hair. was black. The head of the police department was black. Number two. Uh, it's not person, in charge of the system, but go ahead. Number two person in charge of the police department was black. All Still of, not in all charge of, all the of city council, Democrats, majority black. Six, Still not in charge of the system. Wow. Six, That's a of, position. six officers charged, three of them were black. A judge before whom two of the officers tried their case, found him not guilty, was black. 
Still uh, not the, in charge of the, the system. The uh, city uh, uh, intendant of public schools was black. The county superintendent of public schools is black. Uh, the attorney general at the time, Loretta Lynch, is black, as was the president of the United States, was black. And yet, still not people, in charge of the system. So who's in charge I asked of the you a simple question, well, well, sir. Well, Wanda Sykes said uh, when, when, uh, when Barack Obama got elected, how are you going to complain about the man when you are the man? Now, from the president to the attorney general to the state attorney uh, to the mayor to the head of the police department uh, to the commission of the schools in the city and in the county uh, to the majority of city council in that city, all of them are black. And you're still saying that we don't run anything? So who's in charge of the No, no, no. I, I said who created She's test was wrong in this one, 110 percent, mainly because she's saying who's in charge of. OK, she did a horrible job trying to clarify or clarifying the question. The thing that Tess is thinking about is who created the system, the system who created. Obviously, we didn't create the system, but we do have roles in the system. So I think, Larry, that's where I feel like if people just talk to each other and go in without emotion and listen to each other and not to listen to respond, we can be more united, y'all. We can, because Larry Elder was trying to explain that, that we had people that look like us in these positions in power in the system that could have changed it. But she's on the same talking point of who's in charge, who's in charge. Meaning, like, she's really thinking, like, who created the system? Who created the system? And he's trying to, like, make the point, bro, we're partaking in the system. We're in the system. Like, we were part We were part of it. Like, <sighs> let me play it. The system. I didn't say we didn't run anything. I, I challenged a lot of those black leaders, by the way. I said who, when we talk about the system, who, what black people have been in charge of any system? I'm not talking about a position. I'm not talking about a mayor. You know, oh, so you're, saying, you're, you're, you're basically saying that they're just so, they're black faces that are still in correct. those positions, so, so, but they're so, still correct. being part Similar of the Similar to you, Mr. So, Elder, so, you're so, a black face in, in a position in the conservative movement. They're they're just the same. They're just on the other side. I'm talking so about then, we have so never then, been so then so then so then when Martin Luther King said in 1966, I believe there could be a black president uh, in about 40 years time, then it really doesn't matter if there's one or isn't. No, it, it's, it's yeah, one. It, nothing it, nothing it, changes. He, he was, he was well, naive. The he was also naive killed him as well. The, well, we know that the FBI and the CIA also killed him. That system. You realize that, correct? Wow. An individual killed him. Right. That was also... That I disagree with, though, with Larry Elder. Because the individual... Y'all, read. I read about it, too. I, and I was even perplexed. I read about it years ago. The... A, the system killed Martin Luther King, allegedly. Let me just put that out there so that nobody come at me. Like, like no FBI, no CIA or anything like that. But allegedly, come on now, y'all. Be for real. But I feel like Tess is still missing his point, though. Like, she's still missing what he's trying to say. I feel like this is why part of the reason why this interview is going viral, because it's chaotic. And it's like, this all could have been preventable if, if they just listen. Like, that's the issue. They're not listening. Part of Pro Hotel through the system. Cointel correct? Yeah. Uh, not correct. Cointel Pro. N not, not correct. He was so killed. the FBI didn't have anything to do with it? The CIA didn't have anything to do with yeah, it? Yeah, Hoover Why was we... definitely on Martin's ass. Like, come on. I, did, I didn't say They're he like wasn't. Cha uh, changing topics. Robert Kennedy is the one that approved the wiretaps. But to say that the FBI killed him? I mean, what's your evidence of that? Oh, no, I, yeah, that, that's, I, I, that's a pretty that's serious charge. Yeah, yeah, I get what you're saying. Pretty serious charge. Yeah. Serious charge oh, that requires serious about the evidence. Yeah, but... What is your enforcement law proposal? Uh, it is to uh, allow states to set up commissions of retired judges and retired DAs to get rid of these soft on crime George Soros back DAs that are allowing a bunch of bad people on the streets or not charging bad people to the full extent of the law. And the people that by and large are hurt by these people are the very black and brown people living in the inner city. Mm. Mm. There's a um, uh, Larry Krasner is a uh, George Soros back DA in Philadelphia. He's been impeached. But this Philadelphia State Senate wouldn't even take up the case. We've had two attempts to repeal a soft on crime DA in L.A. County, uh, and uh, it, it hasn't gone through yet. Uh, we've got a bunch of, in my opinion, this guy Alvin Bragg. Uh, he ran promising to get Donald Trump, and when he got in, he said the evidence wasn't there. And then one of the former DAs writes a book, accuses uh, Bragg of giving uh, Donald Trump a pass, and all of a sudden he brings counts against Donald Trump. I think it's unfair. Do you think members of your party are leaning toward fascism? <laughs> Define fascism. Authoritarianism. De define fascism. I mean, the rejection of democracy, the rule of law, and equal rights under the law in favor of a, a strong man, Donald Trump, who interprets the popular will. Uh, no, I don't. 
Uh, there was a long article about uh, Barack Obama by one of my uh, mentors. His name is Thomas Sowell. He's an economist, he's a black conservative, still alive. Ooh, Thomas, years old. Thomas Sowell. And he wrote a piece in which he said a lot of people call uh, people like Barack Obama socialist. Socialism is government ownership of the means of production. Mm -hmm. Fascism is when the government allows you to own means of production, but government tells you what to do. And he said, frankly, technically, people like Barack Obama are fascists. That is to say, these are left wing people telling you how to run your business, telling you what to sell, telling you what mm -hmm. you can't sell. For example, in California, we have a governor named Gavin Newsom who recently said by the year 2035, no more sale of new gas powered cars. How dare you? Uh, most people don't want a, uh, an EV. They like their own gasoline powered cars, but now you're telling car dealership they can't even sell them? What do you call that? Mm. But what about, you know, uh, when they, you tell women what to uh -uh. do? Uh-uh. He can't disregard that. He can't disregard that because Larry Elder is 100% true on that. He didn't lie on that. You can't disregard that point. You see where, where I was talking about before, how they're just talking to think of what they're saying next instead of actually hearing each other, like in the conversation. I wouldn't go as far as use the word fascism because I don't know. I feel like a lot of times, especially nowadays, people use words so lightly, but yeah. Well, that is a moral issue. I happen to be pro-life and I believe that uh, um, that abortion is a sin. That's not telling women what to do with their body. That's expressing my opinion about whether or not it is right or it is wrong. For example, there is a guy right now behind bars in Philadelphia named Dr. Kermit Gosnell. Mm -hmm. He is an abortion doctor who performed late-term abortions. Mm -hmm. When I ask people who consider my position to be extreme, I ask them, tell me at what point do you believe pregnancy has gone so far that to terminate the unborn would be, would be homicide? And almost nobody will give you an answer. Mm -hmm. Uh, so in other words, what you're really telling me then is this guy, Dr. Kermit Gosnell, should be set free. He's a political prisoner. He was persecuted unfairly. If you won't, if you won't tell me when you think at what, what point a pregnancy uh, cannot uh, be terminated unless it's, unless, unless it's homicide, uh, then to me you're essentially allowing women to, to kill the unborn no matter how old that unborn is. And I, and I think that's wrong. The other thing, Charlamagne, real quickly on this issue, it'd be one thing if the pro-life community was not talking the talk and walking the walk. But there are literally thousands of pregnancy centers all over America, whether it's funding for uh, adoption services, funding for housing, funding for education, funding for job training, uh, to let women know they have alternatives. Mm. And every state will decide this. The government shouldn't be passing some sort of law one way or the other regarding abortion. Every state's going to decide that. I'm in California, which is a deep blue state. There have been two initiatives to restrict abortion. I voted in favor of them. I was overwhelmingly defeated. Uh, and when abortion has been put on the ballot in recent years, uh, the people that wanted abortion restrictions have lost. Mm -hmm. uh, the American people pretty much have said first-term abortions, they want them to be legal. Late-term abortions, they don't want them to be legal. I happen to disagree with that, but I'm willing to live in a society that has a different point of view than, than I have on this issue. Can you have a real democracy if you're taking away people's power of choice? If you're taking away people's power to choose and not giving them any option. Well, if you, it, consider, it to be a, if you consider it to be a crime uh, that abortion is a sin, in my opinion, you're not taking people's right to choose. You're making a moral statement about what's right and what's wrong. I mean, there's a lot of sins, though. Sex before marriage is a sin. I'm sure you did some of that. Uh, as for the sins of my past, either the Lord has forgiven me or, or the statute of limitations well, forgive, has, 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 has run out. I'm, I'm making a they'll joke about that. A lot of, That's what? the stuff I be talking about. Like, I'm sure you did some of that. Charlamagne. <laughs> uh, Larry Elder, Larry Elder, Larry Elder. He. Y'all, I have like these little flyaways on my blanket. Larry Elder, I'm, I'm sure he's like, bro, y'all. People, of course, make mistakes, yeah. yes. What time am I at? Okay. And I think that people okay. uh, should deal with the consequences of their actions. And, and if you uh, let people know their consequences to their actions, it will inform their actions and make them behave more responsibly. Yeah. Any, anytime you allow bad behavior to continue, you're going to get more bad behavior, whether that's... So how does that apply to tra pre President Trump then? Because you said that was a two-tier si system that um, Because I don't, I, I, don't, so I, don't believe, I don't believe Donald Trump... You don't he, think he did anything? I don't think he did anything wrong. No, I don't. I believe that he complained okay. about the election the same way Hillary did. I disagree Hillary, with that. I think Donald Trump did do, from the um, records I read, especially with, let me not actually get into that. That's like a whole different conversation. But I think he did do things wrong. However, I do think some of the charges against him, towards him is like, a, it's like a really, 
like the storm <laughs> this let me not even talk about that one but the the main things uh, the main point is he did do some things wrong same thing with hillary too but i think they were easier on hillary than they were on trump in my opinion and also um the current things that are happening with hunter biden i think joe biden is more involved than people want to um express but yeah for four years referred to the 2016 elections having been stolen her word not mine she called donald trump illegitimate her word not mine uh jay johnson who's obama's dhs secretary testified under oath that not a single vote tally was changed by the russians they tried but they failed to change a single vote tally 66 percent of democrats believe the russians changed vote tallies to get Donald Trump elected, even though Jay Johnson testified under oath, not a single one was changed. That's the damage that people like Hillary and former President Jimmy Carter uh, and Stacey Abrams and Hakeem Jeffries and others have said for years referring to Donald Trump as illegitimate. A greater percentage of Democrats believe 2016 was stolen than we feel that way about 2020, but yet nobody calls them election deniers and nobody accuses them of undermining our republic. And they're not undermining our republic. They're complaining about an election. I don't think 2016 was stolen and I don't think 2020 was stolen. Yeah. Right to do so. I know I know you probably gotta go uh, <coughs> have you ever heard of the term a uh, nigga wake up call? No. It is an incident where a person of color forgets that they are of color and are reminded rather brutally by an unexpected act of racism. Oh, have you brother. ever had any of oh, those? Brother. I'm just asking. I'm just <laughs> you think you've ever Well, had I'm I'm acutely aware, Charlemagne, that I'm a black person. Let him know. Just as you are a black person. And when uh, Joe Biden insulted you by saying mm -hmm. You ain't really black. We don't know whether or not you want to vote for me or vote for Donald Trump. Mm. Uh, it seems to me that should have been a wake-up call on that your part. part. How dare this guy come in here and insult you, a black man, and tell you you got to think. Did he lie? Did he lie? Because, Charlamagne, we, we all was side-eyeing you. Like, side-eye, side-eye. Why didn't you speak up right then and there when he said it? This man, Joe Biden, really said confidently in your face, if you got to choose between me and Trump, you're not black. And this man just sat there. I said, are you, are you serious? I wish somebody would, I don't care. Joe Biden, Donald Trump, Ron DeSantis, any politician, you fix your mouth and you try to, try to question my blackness because I'm not voting your way. Anybody, I'm, what? Let me play it kind of way i'm amazed that you weren't mad thank about thank you um i didn't i'm not gonna say I, it upset me just like i'm not letting you upset excuses me. You know I, mean? I don't tend to get upset over things like well that. what i did say well, well you just not, not talk about, about a nigger wake-up call and it seemed to me that that should have been a wake-up call on your part to have a white guy come in here who also said by the way uh uh about mitt romney um uh, because he didn't want to put more regulations on Wall Street, going to put y'all back in chains. And Joe Biden has lied for decades about his civil rights record, claiming that he desegregated movie theaters and restaurants in, in Wilmington, Delaware, when he didn't, any, didn't do any of that. He lied and said that he tried to visit Nelson Mandela during apartheid South Africa. He did not. And he came in here and told you you aren't even black and let you think a certain kind of way. It seemed to me that should have been a nigga wake-up call for you, but it wasn't, apparently. I mean, you know, for the record, I'm not a Democrat or Republican. I didn't, I didn't say you that. were. Yeah, I, think both I don't know what you are. I, I never yeah. even asked you about your party affiliation. Yeah, I'm just saying, you, but you are black. Absolutely. And, and to have a white guy come in here and tell you you have to say, uh, think a certain kind of way, otherwise you, quote, ain't black, wow. How should I have replied to him, you think? What I just now said, how dare you insult me and tell me I, I think as, as a human being, let alone as a black person. Exactly. I don't tell you how to think, Joe Biden. How dare you come in here and tell me how, to, how I, I, I should think. I'm going to vote for Donald Trump if I want to vote for Donald Trump. And, and if I want to vote for Donald Trump, it does not make me not black. 20% of black people, black men, as I said, uh, voted for Donald Trump in 2020. Are they not black now? Mm. So only 80% of black people, black men walking around are really black, 20% are mm. not, because they voted for Donald Trump. How insulting is very, that? How condescending is very, that? Very, very. Mm. I, I mean... You're probably right, but I probably he is. Well, I did. As I said to him in that moment, you know, it's just about me wanting something for my people, and I want to know what is he going to do for my people, and not only for my people now. How are you going to atone for the things you've done to my people? Right. That's it. Right. We're gonna stop it there because, um, yeah, we're gonna stop it there. First of all, Larry Elder ate him up. I'm sorry, he ate him up. He ate them up. He didn't, with the thing that I give props to Envy for, because Envy didn't speak a lot, but I feel like Envy knows he's not very, like, the most um, informed when it comes to, like, political topics. 
so he doesn't try to um lead and guide the conversation even though some of the things he did um he said like two three different points um so that i do give him credit for because it's like he's not gonna input like lead a conversation he's not fully like he fully knows about sort of say two tess like i said before i like tess i really do like her i know people don't like her blah 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 a lot of people on the right don't like her even a lot of people on the left think she do too much i personally like her she just needs to argue with facts that's her main thing she's arguing with feelings she's and she needs to stop over talking that's a key thing because a lot of the stuff like i feel like she has good points i think the way that she expresses her points aren't solid they're like everywhere they're all over the place three charlamagne charlamagne needs to get off twitter a lot of his talking points it just gives very much twitter timeline i think he would be in i think he truly doesn't be, truly understand how much black people are not only leaving the democratic party but actually agree with larry elder i think charlamagne um he recites like talking points that he feels like he has to say um yeah but i do commend charlamagne mind y'all like i y'all know i always try to give a benefit of doubt on this channel like i think the best way to maneuver is trying to understand the other side even though you disagree or trying to understand a person's shoes even though you may disagree with how they view things or how they express their viewings the thing with charlamagne i give him credit for his growth like he is he grew a lot especially when it comes to um social issues specifically and like the realm of politics but the thing with this this is a presidential candidate you have to have your data's analytics numbers facts t's crossed and i's dotted you can't be coming in here talking about some have you ever heard of an n-word wake-up call what now larry elder am i voting for larry elder no but did he just eat them up and left no crumbs yes larry elder he knows what he's talking about larry elder is very very intelligent larry elder has been doing this for years he is not someone to be played with in the playground. Like, you're not finna say some of this slick, slickly, slick, slick stuff and think he ain't gonna check you. He he knows what he's talking about. Very, very, very intelligent man. And he held his ground 10 toes down. Period. Point blank. With that being said, I hope y'all enjoyed this video. I want to know your thoughts in the comments down below. Comment down below what you think, what you think. If you don't know, um, yeah, comment down, comment down below. Um, be sure to like, comment, subscribe, turn on post notifications so you're notified whenever I post a new video. Y'all, we got to get to the point where we can have conversations without being mean, without being rude. And I'm going to, and I actively obviously i'm not perfect on my channel i feel like some things i say are kind of like like come on like you shouldn't have said that but i'm trying actively and i remind myself each time to be the voice of reason try to bring people together try to understand and find common ground and i think that's what we really really need so with that being said i really hope y'all enjoy this video um follow me on my social media thank you all for the support love growth I love y'all. God bless you all. And this is Uduak Connecting People with Policy. Toodles. Oh,